how you fight matters, and this is your conflict checklist. Now I know most of us would like to avoid conflict altogether, and we should avoid fighting, but conflict is a normal and natural part of a relationship. It's actually healthy because it means there's honesty and trust and safety to voice a concern or a complaint. That's essential in your relationships. Because the truth is you're going to unintentionally hurt each other. That's just what happens when two people live together. Conflict happens. Triggers get triggered. Sensitive spots get bumped. It doesn't make you a bad spouse because you accidentally hurt them. But you can become a bad spouse real quick when you refuse to acknowledge their hurt. So plan for conflict now so you can do it right. Avoiding conflict at all costs removes an opportunity to grow together, to learn about each other, to deepen our love for each other, and to strengthen our trust together. Avoiding conflict doesn't protect the relationship. It compromises it. You really want complaints and conflicts to go down? Then invite and encourage your spouse's feelings into a safe place with you. Don't have that, that's a problem. Conflict doesn't destroy marriages, but the way we handle conflict so often makes or breaks our relationships, doesn't it? So here's how to fight right. One, not every time is a good time to bring something up. How we handle the first three minutes almost always determines whether the conflict is productive or turns into a fight and destroys trust and safety instead of building it. So we both have to pay attention to how we're starting this sensitive conversation. We need to make sure that we are calm and controlled, and we need to make sure that they aren't starting in a bad mood either. I mean, let's ask, hey, is this a good time for me to talk about something that's important to me? If they say no, well then we wait. If they keep saying no, then they're immature and your relationship is suffering because of that. You need to be talking to a counselor about that. Two, speak about a specific behavior. Don't bring up what they did last month that made you upset. Don't bring up their past sins. Just talk about this specific behavior that made you feel disrespected or neglected or abandoned or hurt. We don't blame them for making us feel this way. This is a part of us being vulnerable. We share something about our inner world and experience without being critical or blaming or using passive aggressiveness. We take ownership of our feelings. And if we are in a loving, caring relationship, when we share them, our partner should care about how their actions could have potentially unintentionally hurt us. That's not going above and beyond. That's bare minimum. If they don't, you're not in a partnership. You don't have trust and respect. You just have a marriage certificate and there's a big difference. And before you think I'm calling you out, no, I'm calling Emily and I out. This is how we used to fight in a way that's counterproductive. We didn't know what we didn't know and what you don't know can still kill your marriage. And men, maybe this isn't you, but I oftentimes have a tendency to get very defensive and see her complaint as an attack on my character. Like she's calling me the sole problem. So I make excuses or I invalidate her. I dismiss her because I feel like I have to defend myself. I correct her facts. I try to rationalize why she's overreacting. We have to stop doing that. It doesn't help anything at all. No woman in the history of women has ever said, you know what, thank you so much for telling me how to feel. I realize now how irrational I was being. Gosh, are you smart. Now you might be asking, yeah, but what about don't sweat the small stuff? I mean, what about picking your battles and not nagging your spouse? Absolutely, that's extremely important. Grace is foundational in your relationship. We all have to ask, do we have an attitude of gratitude in our marriages or do we complain more than we appreciate? We have to find that balance. Dr. John Gottman says that it should be at least five to one. The goal is 15 to one. Are you appreciating and praising and admiring and expressing gratitude at least five times more than you're saying something negative? This goes for both spouses. But we also can't allow ourselves to get to a point where we feel continually hurt or resentful and not bring that up. If it's important to you, it needs to be addressed. If your spouse doesn't care about things that are important to you, you guessed it, your relationship is in serious trouble. So you need to be talking to someone before you hate them. Let's all remember, what is the goal of conflict? What's the desired outcome? If you believe their goal is making you the enemy, blaming you for all the problems, or they're simply trying to make you feel bad, you'll never deepen or mature in this relationship, and it's dying. You just don't know it yet. So what's the goal of conflict? Why do people bring up hurts or desires or complaints? One word, I need you to sear this word into your brain. Reconnection. They feel disconnected from you. They feel hurt. Millions of couples out there are disconnected from each other and they don't know how to get back to reconnection. They feel alone and hurt and afraid. A lot of them are reaching out to be heard and loved and valued and validated, but they don't have the skills 
or they don't know that they're blinded by their unprocessed pain from the past, so they get critical, or they threaten to divorce, or they blame, or they use the silent treatment, or they defend, or they dismiss. We all have to learn how to reach out with vulnerability and honesty, and we have to learn how to respond to someone else's vulnerability with empathy and validation and understanding and curiosity. We close our mouths and we ask questions to allow them to explain their perspective or experience. Why, because they're right and we're wrong? No, this isn't about right and wrong anymore. Someone you love is hurting. And men, we place a lot of importance on protecting her. And yet when she finally tells us that she's hurt, we mock her or we dismiss her. We don't protect, we patronize. We can disagree with their perspective and still value it enough to explore it, to seek to understand it, to tell them that how they are feeling, their hurt, the neglect that they feel is important to us, even if we don't agree that we necessarily neglected them. Because I'm in a partnership with Emily. I mean, if you're a Christian, the Bible says that you are one flesh. If she feels neglected, I don't need to fight to be right. I compromise and listen because I value her. And I apologize, not before, after I understand what I'm even apologizing for. If I hurt her, I apologize. I don't say, I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't say, fine, I'm sorry, get over it. I say, I'm sorry, that was wrong. The way I was talking to you was disrespectful or dismissive or rude. A real apology takes ownership. I'm not saying apologize for things that weren't your fault. I'm saying empathy demands that we see things from their perspective, and sometimes we can see Oh yeah, I can see now, I was being dismissive. During your next conflict or fight, I want you to answer these important questions. Am I being vulnerable or am I just criticizing? Did I listen for any hurt underneath any criticism or frustration? Is it possible they aren't calling me a failure? They're just seeking reconnection with me. Have I asked any questions about how they're feeling? Have I explored and validated their experience? That doesn't make it 100% accurate, it just means it's important to us. Am I working towards repair and reconnection or away from those things? Sue Johnson says, when marriages fail, it is not increasing conflict that is the cause. It is decreasing affection and emotional responsiveness. How you handle conflict matters. Whether you're an emotionally safe person for your spouse matters. How you react matters. Whether you handle conflict with criticism or defensiveness or shutting down or contempt or nagging or avoidance or silent treatments or dismissiveness or contempt, it all matters. It's all destructive and incompatible with your relationships succeeding. So stop, learn to do something different. Your relationship depends on it, trust me. You don't have to wait like I did until you're talking about the details of your divorce before you figure this stuff out. You want me to save you 10 grand and a lot of time? Learn how to handle conflict. And once you figure this stuff out, let me tell you what happens when you heal some old hurts and start speaking to each other and handling conflict in a loving, respectful way. Your love deepens, your connection strengthens, your friendship comes back, your playfulness and passion come back. It becomes a new relationship. Not like the shallow one you had before, but one with actual intimacy and honesty and vulnerability and safety and connection. And that relationship is worth fighting for. I promise you that. But I also promise you that it always takes two to be fighting in the right way. The best prevention of divorce is a healthy, mature, intimate marriage together every single time. Are you working towards one? 